to elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and witness of Christ's suffering, who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care. Watch over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be. Not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve. Not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. All of you clothe yourselves with humility towards one another, because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be alert and sober of mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Stand firm in your faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. And the grace of all the and the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you and make you strong firm and steadfast to him be the power forever and ever So, let us speak about um, who Jesus Christ was as a man, and some of maybe some of what his his um, thought process may have been. Um, we always talk about. Jesus Christ is as the Son of God. We talk about him um, as 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 the person we're supposed to follow in order to to find our way back to our heavenly home. But we never talk that much about who he was as a man on earth. The reason why he was so wanted by the Pharisees and why the Pharisees themselves ultimately set him up to be killed by the Romans when the Romans themselves did not want to kill him. As we remember, Pontius Pilate washed his hands of the whole situation. Who was Jesus Christ as a man? He was, if we were to bring him into modern times, he'd be a human rights activist. He would be a political activist trying to speak for equality. He'd be, if we were looking at him in the... um, through the, through the lens of today, he'd be standing for indigenous rights. He'd be standing trying to help 
visible minorities be equal, help women be educated. That's who he was as a man. He was a political activist who was trying to make us see that we all should be equal to each other. That we shouldn't hold prejudices prejudices against each other. That we should be seeing how we're all connected together through our creator and through the planet that, that he that he has given us our creator has given us he would be standing in standing for all those all those issues that would help us to live and love better That's who he would have been if he'd be living here right now. So, with that being said, and we're we're all supposed to be Christians following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. With those same footsteps, should we not be the ones speaking out for injustice? Should we not be the ones speaking out saying, hey, we're... the." This person here isn't being treated equally the same as this person over here. Should we not be the ones speaking out against segregation and discrimination? Should we not be the ones to speak out and help those who are in need and be the, be that equalizer bringing love to people? Our churches should be open to all those who are in need. Our ch- we shouldn't be the ones standing there. No, no, we don't want your kind here. You're not welcome. We should be welcoming to everyone. We should be the ones understanding that we are all joined together in all brothers and sisters to our creator we are all the children of God that we should be the ones with the understanding that he wants to bring us all home to our heavenly place we should be that voice we should be that voice bringing everyone together When it comes time to when we when we hear that our government needs to right or a wrong, we should be the ones with pen and paper in hand, or in this day and age, computer and email, sending letters, reminding our elected officials of their duty to be fair and equal to everyone. We should be the ones ensuring that our police system isn't just some means of systemic discrimination. We should be making sure that they really do protect and serve our community. Jesus Christ as a man also stood for nonviolence. He stood for the peaceful protest. There's a way to peacefully protest things. We don't need to blow up a building. We don't need to step into the face of a healthcare worker because we disagree with something the government said. That is not following the way of Jesus Christ. Following the way of Jesus Christ is actually going to the person who made the rule to begin with. And confronting them and telling them that it wasn't fair. Confronting them with a letter. 
confronting them with a vote. That's who Jesus Christ wants us to be. And that's following in the ways of Jesus Christ. Not standing on the step sidelines and doing nothing. But we should be the ones reporting the wrongs so that they can be righted. We should be looking for ways to make that humble voice loud. We should be looking for ways to help others understand that we all have a plight. We all find pain and that we all deserve happiness. There is no qualifier because of how you look or where you grew up in the ways of happiness. We all deserve it. And on that path, we're all going to find some sort of pain. And when we see our brother or sister suffering in that pain, we should be helping to lift them back to their feet. So we all can walk together towards the kingdom of our Creator. That's who we're supposed to be as followers of Jesus Christ. So ask yourself, are you living up to that? Are you doing what you can to help your neighbor? Are you doing what you can to ensure that everyone can live a happy life? When you see someone in pain, do you help to dust them off? Sometimes maybe we're not to be the ones that actually provide the help. Maybe we just need to be the guideline to that help. Do we do that? Do we volunteer at charities and soup kitchens and try to do things to help ease each other's pains? Not with a judging hand, with an open, loving and kind hand. That's how we follow in the ways of Jesus Christ. To follow in the ways of Jesus Christ does not mean to be righteous. It means to be kind. It means to be stern in our faith that God wants everyone to be treated equally. So ask yourself, do you do these things? Do you do things to make people feel welcome around you? Do you do the things that need to be done so that we all can live well? We all can live the same. Do you stand for equality? Do you stand so that all of us can have the same rights? If you wish to call yourself a true Christian, not a good Christian, but a true Christian, then these are the things that we need to do. We need to stand for equality. We need to stand so we all have the rights. And we need to stand 
so that we can find the happiness. We need to lift each other up. We need to help each other reach the kingdom where we all will have a seat in glory. So let us pray for that. Thank you, Lord, for for all the wonderful things that you have given us. Thank you for our ability to speak out and help others around us. Thank you for sending us the help that we need when we need it. Thank you for helping us recognize help when it does come so we can receive it with open arms and open hearts. Help us to to have the wisdom the wisdom that knows the difference between helping and doing no harm so that we know when to step back do no harm in the way of guidance and we know when to step forward and offer assistance help us all to know these things help us to be grateful for your guidance that you give us every day. 